What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys, welcome to another Crack a Pack episode. Before we jump into this one, I do have a quick apology to make because the last two Crack a Packs were not actually released. Unfortunately, the video footage uh, was corrupted, so we weren't actually able to post those. So I do apologize, we were a bit sparse on videos last week, but we are back now uh, and opening up a pack of Magic Origins, which seems to be something we're getting a lot of recently, uh, but I'm kind of okay with it. There's a lot of really cool stuff in this set. Uh, including the introduction of flipped planeswalkers, which was a really cool mechanic. Uh, Baby Jace is in here, which is really the card that I'm after, uh, but there's certainly a lot of other awesome stuff in here. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario, so we'll hopefully be able to figure out what our draft pick would be if we were drafting this set. Uh, keeping in mind that this is close to a core set in terms of power level, so it's not going to be quite as powerful uh, as the normal expansions that we see uh, throughout the year and things like that. So uh, our first card here, a Crowan Sergeant. Uh, it's a 2-2, two -two, <coughs> excuse me, for two and a red. Uh, it does have first strike and it also has renowned one. So uh, when it dealt, when it deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't renowned already, uh, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it and it becomes renowned. So uh, what's really nice about this is it encourages you to be really, really aggressive. It encourages you to deal damage to the opponent with this uh, and then pump it up after the fact. So you get a three, three basically with first strike, uh, assuming you can connect for some damage, which generally speaking, I don't think is asking too much. If worst case scenario, uh, it's going to be something that the opponent is feeling like, okay, I have to block this or I have to deal with this because otherwise it's just going to start running over the board, especially with that first strike, uh, making it really, really difficult to actually beat in combat unless you could just completely outpower it. So I actually like this card. I don't necessarily think it's a first pickable card, but it's actually not bad uh, to start off the pack. Pretty strong start so far. Uh, Charging Griffin is a 2-2 two, two for 3 and a white. It has flying. Uh, whenever it attacks, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. So uh, if you are hopefully being the aggressor in the matchup, you're actually swinging in with a 3-3 three, three with flying instead of a 2-2 two, two for 4. So actually not bad on the stats end of things. It kind of sucks that it loses that power and toughness boost uh, if it's just sitting around blocking or something like that. But it is still an evasive threat, which is really, really nice. Uh, preferably, though, I think I would take the Sergeant over this just because that first strike is really, really key, in my opinion. Flying is quite good as well, but first strike makes that good on on defense and offense a little bit better. So for my, in my opinion, I think uh, the Sergeant is definitely the pick so far. Uh, Catacomb Slug uh, is a 2-6 vanilla creature for 4 and a black. Absolutely useless card. I hate these kinds of cards that are just on the board to stall the board. Uh, there's no power uh, that, that is worth mentioning here at 5. You would really expect to have a lot more power. Now it does have a lot of toughness, so it's probably going to survive for a while and stall out the board, like I said, but it doesn't do anything. It's a vanilla creature. It just kind of sits there. Uh, so I don't really like this card. I generally stay away from these kinds of cards. Uh, anything that just kind of stalls out the board is generally not the best unless you have a reason to stall out. Uh, and in this case, obviously, we don't. Uh, Subterranean Scout is a 2-1 for 1 and a red. When it enters the battlefield, target creature with power 2 or less can't be blocked this turn. Uh, this is really, really good in tandem with a card like the Acroan Sergeant, which uh, basically this just makes it unblockable. You can swing in, get that Renown trigger, and then it becomes a 3-3 with first strike right off the bat. Really, really powerful uh, synergy there. And this, in general, is just a really, really good aggressive card as well. Now, obviously, it's not a super powerful card in terms of 2-1 stats. That's not great. But uh, it enables you to kind of get in for that extra point of damage or extra two points of damage in this case, uh, if you can. Uh, and that's really, really good. And like a red-white uh, go-wide strategy or something like that, that's exactly what you want. I would rather have the sergeant over this. Uh, just because it's on its own a little bit more of a powerful card. But if I'm if I'm taking the Sergeant, this is definitely a card that I'm looking to pick up later in the pack. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Orchard Spirit is a 2-2 two -two for two and a green, and it can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. Uh, interesting card. It's a little bit of a weird way of saying it's kind of evasive. Um, it's really not that evasive in my... I, I mean, it's fine, but... 
it just doesn't seem that great. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for 3, which is a little bit underpowered, uh, and it can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach, so it's nice because it's going to be able to get in for a little bit of damage, but I just feel like there's so many more powerful things you can do at 3. Uh, that being said, because like I said at the beginning of this, it is kind of on a core set level, it might be okay. It's probably a good curve consideration card uh, if you really need some more 3 drops, uh, which is a really crucial part in your, your mana curve anyway. It's probably useful to pick something like this up if you're in green, uh, but in general, definitely not a first pick in my opinion. Uh, Negate is an instant for one and a blue uh, counter target non-creature spell. We actually see Negate come up fairly often. It's been reprinted quite a number of times. Uh, and in Limited, I don't like taking it quite as much as something like Essence Scatter, which does very similar thing, very same mana cost, but it targets creatures, not non-creatures. Uh, limited notoriously is something that gets one on board. Usually uh, you're going to flood the board with a bunch of creatures and you really want to be able to win on board where non-creature spells tend not to be quite as powerful. Uh, not saying they're not played. Obviously they are and you're probably going to find a hit for this, but you're not going to get that, that great value exchange that you would get out of a counter-target creature spell. So for me, not quite as high pick. Uh, definitely something for a sideboard to consider consider if you're in blue. Uh, maybe you find yourself up against kind of a Spells Matters uh, deck or something like that. In that case, pull this in from the sideboard. It's a great addition, but in general, I don't think I would main board a card like this. Uh, Claustrophobia is an enchant creature for one and two blue. When it enters the battlefield, tap at the enchanted creature, uh, and the enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. This is very classic blue removal and a very powerful piece of removal at that. Uh, something you really, really have to highly prioritize in a set like this is removal, really in any set, let's be honest, but in, uh, in a sort of core set focus, uh, you really, really need that removal to be able to deal with the bombs because if you can deal with the bombs, you're probably going to be able to win the game. Uh, that's obvious kind of in any set, but I think really, really crucial in the core set where the bombs really make a huge difference on board. A lot of times you end up in a bit of a stall. Something like this can really break that stall and put that game back in your favor. Uh, and so for me, this is actually definitely the pick so far. Uh, as much as I like the the aggressive nature of that sergeant, I think claustrophobia is just so much uh, higher valued. You just have to pick it up early. Uh, Guardians of Melitiz, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 0-6 for three of any color, and it has defender, so it cannot attack. Uh, we already talked about stall cards. They're just not my favorite. This one does have the added upside uh, of being able to be played in any deck, which is kind of nice. And maybe you need to bring it in from the sideboard for some reason. If you're against a really aggressive strategy, I could see that. Uh, but in general, this is not a high priority pick either. It just doesn't win anything. It's a 0-6. It cannot deal damage unless you start stacking enchant creatures on it, in which case you're opening yourself up to a lot of uh, just losing value uh, if they destroy it and it only has one enchant creature on it it's still a two for one not in your favor and that's very very bad so in my opinion this is just a fairly unplayable card unless you find yourself in a situation where you really really need to stall out early Ooh. Uh, Fiery Impulse is an instant for one red. It deals two damage to target creature, uh, and then it has Spell Mastery. So if there are two or more instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard, it actually deals three damage to that creature instead. So uh, this is technically Shock that only targets creatures. Uh, and then if you have that Spell's Mastery trigger, it becomes Lightning Bolt, again, only targeting creatures. The fact that it only targets creatures is a little bit of a downside, but it's not huge. It's still definitely a really high priority card. What I like about this is it deals with the creature uh, immediately and it removes it from the board, whereas Claustrophobia uh, keeps it on the board. If they have a destroy target enchantment or something like that, they can get around it. Uh, and so this is actually a really, really good card. Definitely, I think, better than Claustrophobia. If nothing else, on the end of efficiency, it only costs one red. That's pretty good. Uh, Spell Mastery in a red deck, you might be able to hit it most of the time. It depends on your, your level of combat tricks and things like that. Uh, but Burn in general is always really, really good. Uh, Knight of the Pilgrim's Road is a 3-2 uh, for 2 and a white with Renown 1. Again, we already looked at that. If it's dealt damage to the opponent, it becomes Renown, and then it gets that plus 1, plus 1 trigger, so it will become a 4-3 for 3. Uh, obviously, that has to happen after it hits the, the, the board, but uh, I don't love this card. Again, I think it's just an okay kind of 3-drop. I don't think it's great. Uh, it just it doesn't do that much. I mean, it encourages that aggression for sure. 
but it can definitely, definitely get outpowered pretty easily with only two toughness, especially. It's going to be really, really easy to beat it with a two drop or something like that. And that's not ideal. You really want something that's going to be able to bowl over uh, the opponent's board, and this just doesn't do enough of that. Uh, our first uncommon is Magmatic Insight. Uh, it's a sorcery for one red, and as an additional cost to cast it, you have to discard a land, but you get to draw two cards. I actually remember when this card was spoiled, there was a lot of speculation that this was going to be starting to replace some of the cards uh, that we saw in Modern in some decks, which I think was tested, but I don't think it was really the best option. Uh, I don't know if it really sees much play in Modern anymore. I don't think so. Uh, but it is actually a fairly powerful card. I don't think it's good for Limited in general. A lot of times you just really want to continue hitting your land drops. Uh, while card draw is pretty sparse in red and it's nice to have it, I just don't think this is enough uh, card advantage to really, really matter. You're still trading technically two cards for two cards, so you're not actually gaining anything uh, other than digging through a little bit of your deck, which is useful, but not quite as useful as actual card advantage. So in my mind, this is just not worth it. Uh, in limited, you might find a place to play it, but in general, I don't think it's great. <laughs> Uh, Sylvan Messenger is a 2-2 for 3 and a green. Pretty expensive off the bat, but it does have Trample, so it can deal uh, any excess damage straight to the opponent. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you reveal the top four cards of your library, put all elf cards revealed this way into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, actually pretty good, because in this set, elves are very, very powerful. Uh, there's a Shaman of the Pact is really one of the bomb uncommons of this set, uh, and it's a green-black kind of elf build that focuses around just throwing out a bunch of elves, and then playing a Shaman of the Pack to deal a lot of damage. It's really, really cool and a very powerful card, this being a very key one in that deck. Uh, the only downside I will say is it pigeonholes you a bit. Uh, it puts you in that elf deck kind of right off the bat, and you may not get there right off the bat. Uh, but on the other hand, you're probably not going to wheel a card like this. It's probably going to be something that gets scooped up pretty early. Uh, so I'm going to keep it in the pile for now because it is actually quite powerful. Uh, and the fact of the matter is when it hits the battlefield is really where you're getting all your value. Uh, you're getting to, to look through the top four cards of your deck and put any elves into your hand. That's huge. It's just going to keep your momentum going. That's exactly what you want to do. Uh, Blightcaster is a 2-3 three for 3 and a black. When it, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may have target creature get minus 2, minus 2 until the end of the turn. This is actually a really, really good card. Again, it's a bit of a pigeonhole because you're going to start wanting to take those enchantments pretty early, but the earlier the better uh, in a lot of circumstances. Being able to know, okay, I need these enchantments, I need to prioritize them a little bit more is great. We saw a Claustrophobia in this pack as well. It's nice to be able to say, okay, maybe I can get that back. Generally speaking, you won't because Claustrophobia is a fairly important card, but on a lot of circumstances, you can kind of think that way. Uh, and then this is a removal spell on a stick. If you can continue playing a couple enchantments, you're going to start to be able to deal with all the creatures and just really start taking over the game. The value there is huge. Uh, it's really, really awesome. Uh, definitely love this card, and I'm going to keep it in that pile as well. Uh, and then our rare here is Alhamrit High Arbiter. Uh, it's a 5-5 five, five for 5 and 2 blue. It does have flying, and when it enters the battlefield, each opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose uh, the name of a non-land card revealed this way, and then your opponent can't cast spells with the chosen name. Uh, so this is just a straight-up blank spot uh, for the opponent, which is pretty awesome. Not only that, it's a 5-5 five, five flyer. Yes, it costs 7, but I think it's worth it. Uh, and you can also, being able to blank a card on your opponent's side uh, is huge because maybe they have a removal spell. Well, now you just say, well, you can't play that removal spell, which is pretty awesome. So uh, I actually think definitely this is going to be the pick. Uh, I don't believe we got a foil. No, we didn't. So I'll hammer it. Definitely seems like the bomb I would be looking for uh, in pack one. So I think it's definitely the pick, but feel free to disagree in the comment section below. I'm happy to have that conversation. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.